Hello indie game fans, a little bird told me that there will be a steam sale this week in conjunction with the lunar new year sale which means a lower than normal number of new releases meaning that January this year has really been that sort of month with ups and downs and not that many big titles but the top 10 best indie games of the week starts with Temtem, perhaps the biggest title of January since this game wants to fulfill the promise of a Pokemon MMO. If the Kickstarter numbers are any indication, this game will be absolutely massive since this is something that people really do want. While there is a classic story campaign where you journey through the lands, battling an evil clan and fighting the 8 dojo leaders, the focus certainly seems to be on the multiplayer battle end of things. Select 8 of your own Temtem to bring into battle, where a pick and ban phase will leave you with 5 before the battle begins, so perhaps a budding eSport to rival the Titan in the space? As always, I love to see the different designs of the creatures, and there appears to be a large amount of customization options for both your player outfit and player housing. So if it turns out into another huge smash hit, that would just warm my heart. I'm always in to check out Rook Light titles, and Ether Loop is the standout one this week. A pixel art top-down bullet hell shooter, one can certainly see the influence of games like Enter the Gungeon in this. However, my concern about this game is that it doesn't have a unique hook per se, but the action does look fun and frantic, and I hope it does well. Draconoid, as the name proposes, is an Arkanoid style brick breaker only where you have to draw the pedal itself. When the ball enters the lower section of the screen, it slows down, giving you some time to react, but the odd geometric shapes, power ups, and insane neon lighting gives this game a whole lot of style. Seems neat, and not just another clone. Imanus is an interesting one since this is a free-to-play thriller title about people that never existed and a sick city going insane. Seems like quite a classic pixel art adventure game but with some modern day elements like smartphones and flappy bird clones built into this. Additionally, the developer's previous title was released in 2015 and was free to play as well. So I'm wondering how this is being sustained, or perhaps it is a hobbyist game developer just trying things out. Regardless, seems creepy enough and for free, why not? My first impression of Dungeon Origins was not that great, but then I remembered, looks are not everything. This is a pixel art dungeon builder, akin to Dungeon Keeper, where you construct the labyrinth, lay traps and place minions to stop the adventurers coming in. The pixel art does not pop, but it is kind of cute and grows on you, with what seems to be an extensive skill tree 
for the unlocking and development of your dungeon. If you have any love for classic Japanese shooter maps, Desertopia may be of interest. It has quite a nonsensical story of high schoolers and underground creatures, but chucking that aside, the action looks fun and hectic. I would think that it is a design choice to have the 4x3 aspect ratio, but the hook seems to be that your ship has 4 guns that can be fired in all 4 directions at the same time, so a lot of firepower and looks just like a Toho game. If you enjoyed games like Devil Engine or Zero Ranger, keep an eye on this. Tani Nani, besides being a fun little title, is a tile swapping puzzle game where you have to get the two little creatures to meet. Of course, there are optional collectibles, additional elements like keys and gravity, and even the ability to rotate the tiles, all while the creatures move in real time. So this game seems quite cleverly designed. Bloom if not evident by the 5 seconds of footage shown, is a very old school first person shooter where you have to fight through the hordes of demon summoners to destroy the black flower before it blooms. This looks very much like classic Doom or Quake, with some slightly more modern elements in it. It is metal AF, and even pays tribute to those games by having an episodic structure. It's pretty neat to see indie games move into aping that early 90s look, and while those titles were perhaps more of a limitation of the hardware and don't exactly look beautiful as compared to the timelessness of pixel art, it is still nostalgic and pretty neat. Not normally a fan of horror games, so don't trust my judgement, but I think that I can spot a decent one of these, and Submersed seems to be that title this week. Trapped on board an offshore structure in the high seas, you play as a rescue worker who received a distress signal but upon arrival, the facility itself seems to be abandoned. Dealing with the very real fear of the sea, drowning and sharks, this seems interesting at the very least.
following in the footsteps of comedic physics simulator games like Goat Simulator, Deer Simulator, your average everyday deer game wants to capture some of that very same market with a deer that can use its neck to swing around like Spider-Man, a bipedal deer that can ride on a horse to the Megazord animal battles as well. This self-describes as a slow-life town destruction game, so definitely in the same vein as its inspiration, but it just seems so weird which is part of its charm. These comedic games tend to be hit and miss, and are perhaps classified as streamer beat, but I hope that people can enjoy and get some laughs out of this, taking the number one spot. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, share and subscribe, check out the recommended playlist or the best pick for you, and I will see you after the jump.